What is going on guys? We are back and today we are going to be starting a brand new Surviving With series and if the title did not already give it away or my tweet about it earlier, it is going to be Surviving With Create. Now you guys have been asking for this a ton so I finally looked into it and honestly guys this mod looks amazing. I cannot believe I had not heard of it until you guys started posting on Twitter and in the YouTube comments about it but I am so glad you did because this is probably one of the most excited times I've ever had when playing modded Minecraft because seeing this reminds me of Better Than Wolves and almost like it's combined with immersive engineering. It looks extremely realistic and just absolutely phenomenal. It looks like you can make some amazing looking builds that are extremely complicated with it. And I'm just, I'm so excited. So uh, I just wanna give you guys an overview of what the mod is and then we'll do the housekeeping stuff before we jump into the series as a whole. So the mod itself is basically about rotational energy. And what you do is you're going to generate it somehow. So an example would be a water wheel. Then you move it wherever you want. You can use gearboxes to increase or decrease the rotational speed and a lot of other things. Um, you use the shafts to transfer it. And then you are going to utilize it in different machines that utilize rotational kinetic energy. Um, so that's a very, very simple way of putting it. But that's what this mod is about. And it looks amazing. I know I keep saying that, but I'm super excited. Now, the housekeeping stuff that we're going to go over before we jump into the episode today is traditional with all the Surviving With series. So if you've been here for a while, you've heard this probably 10 plus times from me. But for those of you that are new here and you are curious what the Surviving With series is, it is a series where we play through modded Minecraft with one core mod, one mod that changes the game in a massive way and nothing else. We have a couple quality of life mods, things like journey maps, which you can see, Wayla, different things like that, that we can add in that make our lives easier when we're playing the game. It makes it better for you guys to watch, but it does not actually alter the core gameplay. It doesn't make anything easier for us. So we have a list of all those mods in the description where you can also find the seed for this world if you would like to play along with me and you would like to be able to, you know, build things where I build and do all that fun stuff, which I definitely encourage so that you can ask many questions and learn alongside with me. So that was a mouthful, but now we are finally done and we can jump into the cool stuff. But first we need to sleep and that is because it is nighttime out. I can hear an Enderman outside and I definitely don't have enough stuff yet to actually tackle an Enderman or you know a couple creepers or stuff. So we're not gonna deal with that. But one thing I will say is that if you are curious, yes, I've already played in this world. It was recommended to me a while ago that I actually start the series once I've played a little bit so that we don't have to do the punching of the trees, the mining of the ore, and we can actually jump into modded Minecraft right away. So as is typical with every modded Minecraft series, you will see the first thing that we need to do is get some kind of power. And we're not going to be putting up a generator and putting coal in it or something today. We're going to be starting just like we did with immersive engineering. And that is by going to the water wheel. So now we will have done this for two series in a row, but trust me, this one is a little bit different. And so we are going to make the water wheel and we're going to learn a little bit about rotational energy that we generate in this mod, how we're going to move it a little bit using the shaft. And then we are going to use some gearboxes. And then we are going to finally, hopefully, be creating, where is it? Somewhere in here, we're gonna be making the metal press. And I don't know if I actually grabbed all the stuff, the mechanical press, to make this, but we should have plenty. Um, so we're gonna be making that, and this is all in the attempt to eventually get to the crushing wheel, which is going to allow us to process our ore and get a couple extra pieces out of each one Maybe, I think there's like maybe a 30, 50% chance that we can double our ore. So that is the first goal we're going with. We're not gonna get all the way there today because it's a pretty lengthy process. But like I said, starting with the water wheel. So it's actually not super expensive to make, um, but it does require andesite, which is something that I've never really had to work with in other mods. So I find it pretty interesting, but we need some iron, some wood planks of some sort, uh, one oak log or any log, and then some andesite. So. First thing that we're gonna be making are going to be the slabs. So we're gonna make two sets of those just because we're gonna need eight. And then we go back in here and we need to make the large cog wheel. So to make this, we need buttons, we need planks, which are very easy to do, but then we need andesite alloy. And this is why we need andesite in this mod, which again is funny because I never ever use andesite. I always chuck it out. I'd rather have cobble for things and just use stone. So when I actually found out I needed that, I had to go mining specifically for andesite so that we would have enough. And I'm apologizing if I'm pronouncing that wrong, but I don't think I am. So we're gonna take iron and make it into iron nuggets because we can use these in combination with the andesite to make the alloy. 
And so I made five because we need a lot of these today. We probably need more, honestly, but we can go through now and if we make the buttons, which I'm forgetting, we need four of those. We'll probably need more later. Now we should be able to make the large cog wheel. We'll get two of those. And then we go through and we make the water wheel. Now we're only gonna make one for today, just so we can cover how it actually works, but eventually we could make more. And I think they're pretty easy to just line up next to each other and get a ton of power from them. So the next thing that we are going to make is going to be the shaft. And this one is going to be two andesite alloy to make eight. So that's really easy to do right there. And something I will bring up right now while we're going through this is there is not, as far as I'm aware, an actual book in the game to help you learn about this stuff. You see a couple pages here, but these are all like schematic things. There's no essentially in-game wiki like some mods have. There is a wiki online, but in-game, if you need quick info, if you mouse over any of the actual machines, you can hold shift and it will tell you a couple things about it. So it's gonna tell you how many RPMs uh, it has, depending on how I guess with this one you set it up. And then it will tell you that it provides rotational force taken from adjacent water currents. So yes, there is an ideal way to set this one up, having water around every single side except the one, and that will get you the most RPM. And then if you look at other things such as, let's say the mechanical press, it's going to tell us that it's a forceful piston for compressing items beneath it, requires constant rotational force, you have stress impact, which we'll go over later, and then things about redstone. But that's where you can get all the info while you're actually playing through it. And uh, it's, you know, it's pretty useful. You might find more in-depth info online or potentially from one of my videos or someone else's, but it should let you know in general what things do and if you should go for them or not. So that was just a brief overview. The next thing that we are going to be making, since we have the water wheel, we can generate it, we can now transfer it, is we need to be able to redirect this rotational force. And we are going to use a gearbox for that. Now the gearboxes can uh, switch the direction of the rotation. They can change the angle of it, things like that. They do not change the speed though. So we're gonna be making this and it requires an andesite casing and four regular cog wheels, which require andesite alloy and eight buttons. So we'll grab out and we'll make eight buttons. We've already got the andesite alloy. And thankfully that's gonna make us multiple of these. So then the only other thing that we're going to need to make this is going to be the andesite casing, which I think we need more andesite alloy for, which is not a problem because I believe I have extra andesite in here, thankfully. So we can grab this out and we should probably just make a bunch of this, but there we go. So now we got five and we should be able to make, whoops, clicked on the wrong one. The andesite, or the, yeah, the andesite casing. We're getting so many recipes unlocked here because I've never done anything with this so far. So then we make the gearbox and there we go. So now we can transfer. I believe we are going to want this gearbox um, because I think we are going to be pushing it down, but time will tell on that one. And then I think the only other thing that we need to do is to make the mechanical press, which the only thing we have left is a block of iron. So we'll grab some of the iron from in here. I got a little bit, I don't have a crazy amount. I haven't done too, too much mining, but uh, yes, yeah, so this is what we're working with in here. Um, and if you guys didn't notice, we're living in a village right here. Now that it's daytime and I can go outside, I can show you. This is, I believe where we started was like right over here. And I walked over, some of the forest burnt down, there was some lava over here. Um, so I walked over here and decided it would be a nice area to start in and we'll expand and we'll actually make our base here and we'll just keep building on it. But what we're gonna do now is, I think we have everything we need, except we need this glass right here. And we're gonna come over and we're gonna put down the water wheel right here on the side of the house. And so we're gonna put it right here and we're gonna mine through just to see where everything is in the house. Okay, so this is where that would come out with the rotational for so that's actually not ideal. I would have liked for it to be a little bit higher up. So maybe we'll go right here. And this still is not ideal, I'll be honest, but I think it should work. So we'll put cobble back down here and we can bring stuff in. Man, this is darn, okay. Well, whatever. So we'll fill in with, hmm. Well, we'll put the water wheel down for now. So we'll put it down here and you can see that this actually does, it well, it should have water going a certain way. So you can technically with a water wheel have water going this way 
and it will still spin. Or you can have water going this way and it will spin a little bit faster. Now the reason is because you want the water to catch on whatever you would call these, these sort of paddle-esque things. You want it to actually catch on them in the proper way and obviously if water is flowing that way, it's going to be catching on these and pushing it much easier than if it was flowing this way. It'll still spin it, but due to the angle of these, it would not actually be catching the water and getting as much of the force to turn it. So you actually do have to follow that logic when it comes to this. So we're gonna want the first bucket of water to go up here. And because of that, we're gonna clear out these stairs up here that just were on the building to start. We'll put down some cobble and then we're gonna put down our glass out here because unfortunately, since we need to have it essentially around the entire thing, there's no good way to make it very aesthetically pleasing. So we're not gonna try for that. Uh, we'll just go with it. So we're gonna have water every block around this except this one where the mossy cobble is. So we're gonna put glass to encase pretty much the whole thing. So we'll put glass like that. We'll put glass over here like this. And then we'll be putting glass right in the front. And we're gonna pull the rotational force into the house. So we should be fine. So now we got a bucket. We'll go grab some water and hop back up here. And we should be able to get it running at full speed essentially. And then we'll never have to do anything else really in here again. Um, Okay, so it goes down like that. How do you prevent that from happening? Is there any way to prevent that from happening? Because we don't want the water to come down here. Okay, we're gonna have to break this glass. So we don't want the water to come down like that, but I don't know if we can put like a sign down or something, because I'm pretty sure if we put a block of glass there, it might stop it from running. Oh, no, it doesn't. Okay, so you can see it actually speeds up. So I guess having a block of glass there does not impact it, which is very strange. Um, I would have thought it would, but we'll put glass there too, just so that it looks normal. And you can't even see that there's glass there really, but you can see that when we put the glass there, it sped up significantly. So I believe this is the fastest setup you can have for this. Um, we should be getting, I don't know if these are actually accurate, um, but if you wanted to measure it and see if you actually get the listed 15 RPMs, that would be awesome. There might be a way to measure it later, but uh, I'm not gonna sit there and try and find out. So what we can do now is mine through this block. And if we were to put down the shafts, they can connect and it will just pull the power immediately right out of this. So we put one down, we put another one down and you can see they are now spinning. So we now have essentially our uh, power coming in here and now that I think about it, we can actually do some interesting stuff with this. So because we have these gearboxes and we can make more, these are going to allow us to turn how the stuff comes in. So basically, if we were to break this right here, and we'll break this too, we can make it go up higher and then bring it down. So we'll grab the gearbox and we'll put it right here. And something the gearbox does is you can see this one is spinning, the shaft coming out this side is spinning clockwise but the water wheel is spinning counterclockwise. Well, that's because in the gearbox, and it even says this in the description, is that it relays rotation in four directions, reverses straight connections. So sometimes you'll use a gearbox for changing uh, the direction. Sometimes you'll use it for reversing a straight connection. But if you know how the internal portions of a gearbox work, you would understand why this is not a mistake. It is actually how gearboxes work. So if you wanna look stuff up like that in general, see the engineering stuff behind it. I can't really explain it to you. I'm a chemical engineer, not a mechanical one. So I do know that that's how it's supposed to work, but I cannot explain to you very well why that's how it works. But now we can actually bring the power up the wall and then we can put something down up here and drop it out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to make another gearbox, it looks like, but I think bringing it up one and then pulling it out should be fine. And I believe we have to do this, and I might be wrong, but I believe the mechanical press when we put it down is going to require the power to be coming in the top. So we're actually going to need two gearboxes here to then drop it back down. But if we were to, I guess we haven't made the mechanical press yet. So if we were to pull this out and put it down, I believe we need the power to be going in the top there. So, Oh no, wait, does it need to go on the side? Oh, it needs to go on the side there. Yeah, that makes sense. So it wouldn't need to go on the top. But what we want then anyways, for we would want another gearbox where this is right here because we want it to be able to push down right into the floor. So we'll put the cobble back down up here. We can break this 
And I guess, I don't know, that's the thing I need to look into, if there's an easy way to rotate these, because what we want is for it to be facing the other direction. Since I believe right on this thing, there's only two faces. Yeah, so this face and the other side are the only two faces. So whatever side you place it down facing, I guess then we could just put it down like this since it's got both faces that work. So what we need is a gearbox, another one. Um, so we need cog wheels, which means we need more wood planks. For the buttons, we'll make a bunch of buttons. And then do we need, so we need the andesite alloy in the center. And then we grab these out and we'll make another gearbox. And I think this time we are going to want, so we need the other gearbox still too. So we got to turn it so that it's the vertical translation gearbox like that. So now we were able to bring it in, raise it up and bring it back out. And if we put down the mechanical press here, I believe that this should be working. Okay guys, so sorry about that, but I was a little bit confused, but it turns out, like I said, you guys are learning this along with me. It turns out when you actually look at the descriptions in this, uh, if we look at the mechanical press, it says when powered by redstone and uh, when above a mechanical belt. So for some reason, much like other mods, you have ones where you can set it that redstone does stuff. This one, I read that and I assumed that that was the case, but actually that means you need to power it by redstone to get what you want, which makes sense. So it's not constantly running because let me tell you, this thing makes some noise. So it says when powered by redstone starts to compress items drop below it. So what we can do is we take the iron ingot, we throw it below, if I could actually accurately throw it below, then we push the button, it falls down, and now we have, we have the achievement bonk, which is pretty accurate, and we now have an iron sheet. Now it's funny because it's iron sheets, but uh, you know, I'm not gonna get too technical about the fact that a single item is listed as sheets. But now we have that, so definitely, probably want to either expand upon this house or move this stuff since if we're going to be having a bunch of things in here where we have a bunch of rotational stuff working and it being translated all over the area, uh, we're going to need some room, but I'm actually pretty happy with this because, um, yeah, we got one thing working and now we are one step closer to getting the crushing wheel, which means we need to make the mechanical crafter, which means we need a couple different things, including brass sheets, electron tubes, all stuff that we'll be working on getting next episode, because I think that's going to be it for today, guys. Now, let me know if you are thrilled about this series. Um, I know a lot of you guys have been asking for this mod. It looks absolutely phenomenal, like I said, and it seems like one that is getting a lot of support. And this is actually my first chance at playing the 1.14 version of Minecraft, since if you play modded Minecraft, you would know that pretty much... Every other mod that's sort of the older ones are maybe up to 1.12, but I've never played past that. I think Immersive Engineering was my first time playing 1.12 even. So pretty excited to be trying out all the new Minecraft stuff in general and getting to play a more up-to-date mod that seems absolutely phenomenal. And don't be fooled by the fact that there isn't a ton of stuff here because it's basically like an infinite puzzle. Each one's a puzzle piece and you can just make whatever you want out of it. I guess that doesn't make really much sense because puzzle pieces make one thing, but I have seen puzzles where every piece connects to every other piece and it's like a galaxy puzzle. So if you know that, if you've ever seen that, that's basically what we're working with here. You can connect whatever you want to whatever you want. It's like Legos, okay? That's a more accurate thing that everyone probably knows. It's like Legos. So we can basically build whatever we want from this. It's super awesome. I'm super excited, but now I'm rambling, but that's going to be it for today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If there's anything specific you want to see covered in this series over the next couple episodes, feel free to ask. Thank you guys for the awesome recommendation, and I will talk to you guys later. Standing in a glass bowl, at the end of a black hole, coal lost and upside down. Faces rolling past me, all my memories rolling vastly.